Previously on Featherstone Bicycles. Wait a minute. This is the series premiere. There is no previously. Hi everyone, welcome to the premiere episode of Featherstone Bicycles. On this first episode, I'm going to take just a few minutes to explain what the channel is all about and how the seasons and episodes are organized, and then uh, we'll get right into our very first project. Featherstone Bicycles is a channel that's devoted to fully documenting uh, the process that I go through in rejuvenating a vintage bicycle. The bicycles I uh, primarily work on are um, from the 1960s to the 1970s and are either Chicago-based Schwinn's or Nottingham-based Raleigh's or for my British viewers, Raleigh's. Now, why do I use the term rejuvenation instead of restoration? It's probably more semantics than anything else, but if you've ever seen an episode of the TV show American Restoration on the History Channel, you'll note that besides completely tearing down and rebuilding an item, they also repaint it. I don't repaint bicycles for two reasons. First, Schwinn did not disclose paint codes for the paints that they used. Now, I could probably use a tool to uh, match the color um, and solve that problem, but the second reason is more important, and that is repainting a vintage bicycle dramatically decreases its value. What I do instead is I use a paint rejuvenation process uh, with products from uh, Meguiar's. So that's essentially why I use, I like to use the term rejuvenation instead of restoration. Uh, but uh, occasionally I'm sure I will slip and uh, throw the restoration word in there. Just uh, humor me and know that I mean rejuvenation for the reasons that I just said. So the process I go through is to completely disassemble the entire bicycle uh, down to the tiniest ball bearing. I then uh, clean every part individually regrease it, oil it as necessary, and then rebuild it. I tend to acquire bicycles that have most of their original parts. I've been doing this for a little over 15 years and I've kind of learned along the way that um, the more parts you have to acquire, um, the more expensive the project gets and then that makes it more difficult to break even when you try to sell the bike after the project is completed. When I do have to find parts, I look for new old stock, then used old stock, and then as an absolute last resource, it would be a brand new part that closely resembles uh, the original part. That's mainly for things like nuts and bolts, etc. Also, for the reason that I previously mentioned, I try to find bicycles that don't have a lot of paint damage. Uh, that said, uh, they're used bikes, they're 50 to 60 years old, and uh, they're gonna have dings and dents and scratches. So while the bikes that I work on uh, at the end of the process don't look uh, like they're brand new, uh, my goal is to have them ride like that first day out of the showroom. So the way the channel is going to be set up is that each season will focus on one specific bike project and then each episode will feature a step or multiple steps in the rejuvenation process. So with all that out of the way, let's get right into our first project. Our first project is a 1977 Schwinn Continental II. Do a little walk around here and uh, 
Check out its current condition. Uh, the color is flamboyant red. It's a 10 speed bicycle. Uh, tires are in very bad shape, so new tires and tubes are gonna be needed. Um, as usual, a lot of rust, especially on the uh, chain ring guard. And um, this particular uh, version of the Continental, um, as it became the Continental II, I believe, featured uh, fully chromed forks. A lot of rust on there. That comes off pretty easily. These uh, foam grips on the handlebars are not original, so I'll be taking those off and uh, putting uh, probably, uh, I think the, uh, when I looked in the catalog, they mentioned that the original uh, came with a black cloth tape, which was a little bit different than what Schwinn usually did, which was a uh, kind of a shiny plastic tape. Uh, it's got both the original reflectors on it, the front and the rear. Uh, pedals are in good shape. Those will all clean up pretty nicely. Um, cables for the brakes and the shifters seem to be in good shape, so that's going to save some money. I should say the cable housings. Cables are going to be replaced on both the shifters and the brakes. <laughs> the head badge is there. That's good. That saves some money. The one problem I did notice um, is that the seat, <laughs> for some reason, has this weird uh, whoops setback here. Uh, not sure what happened. It's almost like it got too near some heat or something. And um, anyway, so that's it. Uh, we'll get started right away on the initial teardown. The one thing that, uh, a couple things that I didn't mention in the walk around is that this bike has 27 inch wheels and it's a 22 inch frame, uh, which the frame size is measured from the center of the hub up to the very top of the uh, seat tube. So it's going to be a bike for a taller individual, that's for sure. not have a master link on it so
I know people have been doing this for 60 years and they still have to think about this every time. The pedal on the left side is reverse thread. and I've done this before I started, was to take a lot of pictures documenting how the bike looked, where all the parts go, and then as I'm taking it apart, I'll put them in bags and uh, tag them with uh, where they go because these little cable housings like this, uh, there's another one down here for the front derailleur and uh, it can be a challenge sometimes matching up which one went where. save the cables because different cables have different uh, stops on them and when you go to the bike shop to buy them you can know which one you want. cables have a different kind of end to them. It's a little cylinder.
Oh, how long did that take? Okay, five hours later. Shifter, bracket off, and this is the um, bracket for the front brake cable goes through there. Now comes a part that some people might cringe at. Okay, we're getting there. So again, this all goes opposite threads.
we'll take this uh, guard off the chain ring assembly and uh, we can actually take the uh, chain rings off as well just to be able to clean them up a little bit nicer and get the rust off. And yes, just like the fork tube, I am going to remove the bottom bracket cup. I told you I'd take it up apart all the way down. I wasn't kidding. Well, what did I leave for last? I left for last the most challenging part of all, sometimes. And that is the built-in Schwinn kickstand. The way this comes off, if you don't have a special tool that Schwinn made, um, specifically for this task, which I do not have, uh, is that there's this pin right here. And this pin holds in this entire thing. So what's going on here is the kickstand comes in, there's this cylinder that has a hole in it, which the pin goes into. And behind this cylinder is a spring and the spring gets wedged all the way into this housing. And you need to push this whole deal in to release the tension that that spring is having on that pin. And then you can pull that pin out with the needle nose pliers, and then the whole thing will come apart. Trust me, it's easier said than done. So the trick, if you don't have the tool, and I learned this from another channel that I watch a lot uh, since I've been working on bicycles. Uh, RJ, the bike guy, uh, you may be familiar with it. Uh, I'll put a link to his channel in the description below. But you use crescent wrench that has a hole in the bottom. And you slide that in, bring it up, and it's just enough room that when you squeeze this, you push this, the cylinder backwards and it allows the pin to be extracted, sometimes. All right, here we go, let's see. I can always already see that pin is really wedged in there oh, and it's moving. frame is completely disassembled. Just realized I forgot one little thing here. That is a little triangular piece that holds the uh, spring from the kickstand from coming out the other side. That's what that looks like. Okay, so frame is all done, empty. And over here, all the parts. There's the wheels. That's from another project. But on this shelf is all of our parts for our bike. Now, when I first started doing this years ago, I would take everything apart before I started cleaning. And um, 
that's kind of a challenge to then keep track of everything. So I still keep some parts together, like the uh, the chain ring and the chain ring guard and the uh, assembly here on the uh, bottom of the kickstand, um, the uh, uh, the brakes and, and stuff like that and the shifters. So um, as we get into the cleaning process, which is the next step, I'll be uh, further disassembling it. And All right, well, thanks for sticking with me through the uh, initial episode here. And uh, next time we'll get into taking the individual pieces further apart and cleaning them and getting them ready for uh, reassembly. Thanks again, and I hope to see you again soon on Featherstone Bicycles. Mm -hmm.